Good morning and welcome to another edition of Steve at Home. Today we're going to be uh, smoothing my uh, garden path outside and I'm going to be using the Ardex K301 uh, resurfacing product for concretes. Uh, it will go from 2 to 20 mil. Uh, easy to apply type of product and as you can see it can be used externally. But with this type of product it has to have a primer. So today um, we've got the two types of primers. We've got P51 and the epoxy R3E. Now the epoxy R3E should be used if we've got vehicle traffic because you can use this product to, to resurface your garage, drives, or anything like that where you've got a concrete floor. So if you're going to drive cars, heavy traffic across it, it's the R3E primer. But if it's just a standard walkway like I've got here, then the uh, P51 primer is fine as long as it's diluted down seven to one, which I'm going to show you later on how to apply. But I want to concentrate this morning on applying the epoxy R3E. So it comes in a can, in, in, a, in a dual can like this. So you separate the two tins, but before you do any of that, make sure you read the labels, uh, follow the, the, the guidance on there. And one of the things it says on there is to make sure you've got adequate PPE. So it's an epoxy type of product. And like I said the other day, we must make sure we're wearing gloves and certainly goggles because if you get it uh, in any open wounds or any open cuts, you can become sensitized to it. So once we separated the two tins, just click out these plastic lugs, which are designed to uh, help if they fall over in transit and for you guys, uh, so you know they haven't been tampered with. So just undo the clips. And basically what we have is a hardener and a resin and we have to mix the two parts together. Now once you've mixed the two parts together, I'll, I'll go through the mixing process, you've then got uh, about 30 minutes to apply the product um, and then it takes six hours to cure. So I just tip that into there, making sure I get every last bit out and we don't mix up with sticks or, or bits of door bar or anything like that anymore. We use uh, a, a whisk and a panel. You can use a cage whisk or, or, a, or a spiral whisk for this type of product, uh, not a problem. So make sure I get every last bit of that out of there. Um, and then I'm just going to gently whisk it up, not too fast so it doesn't spill anywhere. I mix it for a, for, for a minute or so, uh, maybe a couple of minutes, just to make sure you've got all the hardener into the resin. Don't go too fast, as you say, it transfers, uh, it'll splatter everywhere and so on. So as you say, the epoxy primer is ideal for, or, or should be used, when you've got heavy traffic or vehicle traffic, or um, in end scenarios, you can always use the epoxy primer. So there you go, two parts to mix together. Just before I finish, I'll just move the drill out of the way. And then what I'm going to do, I just need to, to make sure I get that last bit of hardener out of there. But also, that product there is classed as hazardous waste if I get caught putting that in a skip. Well, if I just do a simple back mix, which has two benefits. It gets out any last bit of that residue, but also coats the tin up. So when the product becomes hard, which it will do after six hours, this is now suitable or safe to go in a, 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 a skip. So I've dealt with the hazardous issue of that. Very simple, very easy to do. I'll just leave that there. So it's all mixed up. Because I've poured the two back in, I'll just give it another whisk up. Get the last bit mixed up together. Very easy, very simple. Just drop that on there. And we'll talk about cleaning in a little while. I'm just going to clean my gloves off with the Ardex wipes. Now, it goes on with a roller. Short power roller is fine. And all we do, as you can see, I'll work backwards on myself. Just pour a little bit out. Like so. 
and just roll it on. So I'll do half the path with the R3 primer and then I'll do the other half with the P51 later on today and then we can see uh, the two methods of applying it. Now you can see by pressure washing the path how clean it's come off and you've got to make sure you have removed any contamination on it. For my path a pressure washer was good enough but in other scenarios you may have to uh, be grinding off any dirty concrete or anything like that. So as you can see very easy and simple to apply. And this product is fine to use in damp locations. It doesn't act as a damp proof membrane, but it's fine. Any moisture in it will not affect, um, will affect it whatsoever. Now, obviously if this was a room and a job, I wouldn't be working towards the door, which I'm probably all guessing you're thinking about at the moment, but I can step over where I'm working and so on. I'll just put that there. I'll just finish it off, as you can see, very quick, easy to apply. Um, I'll just finish that off there. Anywhere where I can't get into, I'll obviously just use a little paintbrush, just finish the end off there. Just make sure it's a nice even coat, and I don't want it too thick. I'm not trying to put a coating on the floor or anything like that, a nice thin coat over the top. Just drop that on there, keep the side, and then any last bits, just coat up with a paint layer, the paintbrush. Make sure I'm getting everywhere. There you go. Easy and simple. So, I'll just drop that on there. Now I've applied the epoxy. What we need, what we need to do with the epoxy is sand blind it. Okay. So what we're going to do, I've got some of the Ardex Fine Aggregate, which is like a silica type of sand, and we just sprinkle it over. And you want to get it more or less so it's totally covered. A lot of people making a mistake when they're sand blinding. They don't put enough sand on. Any excess you're going to vacuum off once it's gone off. But as you can see, I'm blinding it so I can hardly see it. Doesn't matter if I've got big clumps everywhere, you just say it's going to come off with a vacuum cleaner, not a problem. So, now that, as you say, once it's fully sand blinded, I'll leave it now for six hours. If we are up against time, we do do a faster version called the RDX 5E or R5E. The queue is in four hours. So, uh, but it's a nice day today. I'm, I'm, I'm predicting this will be uh, six hours. And as you can see, fully sand blinded. And you'll notice some areas, if we put it on a bit thick, how it's penetrated through. So, again, it's important to just try and keep it a nice, even film when you're putting it on. And there you go. Ardex R3. Uh, welcome back to Steve at home, where we're doing the K301 on the garden path. Uh, this morning I put down the K3, uh, the Ardex R3 primer, which I sand blinded. You'll notice now I've vacuumed any excess sand off, and that's now ready to go. Now we're going to look at the other area, which we can use on a normal path, that's not having vehicle traffic or anything like that, is the Ardex P51 primer. We're going to dilute this down 7 to 1, it's a one part primer. Seven parts water, so, so it's quite a weak mixture, but I need it to penetrate there. Always give the bottle a good shake uh, before you use it, and you get a really, really good coverage out of the Ardex primer. Uh, diluted like that.
just enough water, I think. And one more. Oh. What I'm going to do is quick mix up. And with our primer, um, if you're watching the Stephen live video this morning, we were talking, we don't recommend putting it down with a paint roller. We recommend putting it down with a broom and working it in to the surface of the concrete. So uh, I'm just going to tip some out like so, as you can see, and then just work it in. And by doing this, obviously you can hear on the video, it's, it's really working in. I'm not too bothered, I'm just going to try and get off all the major puddles. Like so, keep working it in. When we do this with any substrate, whether it's sand, sand, spray, concrete, if you're doing external jobs with maybe uh, either CL, 39, something like that, but it's either just send it to one, is fine for external locations uh, where there's no vehicle traffic going across it. Got a bit of water spill on the R3E. Spread that out, that'll be fine. There we go. That's their primer applied. I've just got to wait for that to go off now. Uh, a little bit. I'm going to catch you when it's still damp. I don't want it fully gone off. And then we're going to put the K301 on the top. Okay, focus well, part three. So this morning I did the R3 primer sand blinded. Uh, this afternoon I put on the P51 diluted to 71 because it's going to be used externally. Okay, uh, and obviously early in the video I explained which primer you need to use where. So now we're going to mix up the K301. Now for anybody that watched when I put the primer on, there is a slight gradient on my, on my path. So what I've done is I've held a little bit of water back Hopefully it's thick enough that it'll stop it running. I want it to run a little bit, but I just want to hold it back at the top end just to give me that smooth um, finish that I'm after. So I've connected the dust extractor. Uh, like I say, I've held back the water, carefully make dabs, um, get my dust extractor going. <laughs> Just checking the consistency. Still got some flow on it. Always good practice to have a bucket beside of it to rinse and rest down. Nice and clean. Ready for the next mix. Obviously, I was on a big job. I'd mix two buckets at a time or possibly use a mixing station. So, while the P51 is still a little bit damp, as you can see. I'm going to apply um, the K301 and as you can see I have held it back but it is still flowing and it's doing exactly what I want it to do. So I'm just going to use a hand trowel 
just to uh, hide up these ends like so and then just pull it back so K301 as we said will go from 2mm to 20mm as a bag in a bottle uh, sorry as a bag in a water as I've just mixed up always important to measure out the amount of water make sure you've got the correct amount and as you can see I've held the water back just enough uh, so it's holding where I want it which is really nice what you can do with this if you wanted to if you're after that concrete resurfacing look with a like a tamp texture if you catch this just as it's going off and put a broom through it you can create that effect and obviously flat trowel at the edges you can give you that effect same as if you've got tamped concrete so you can see it's going in really well so already you can see it's looking uh, nice and smooth keep it going Got some more out you always notice I'm pouring down one side of the bucket so I'm not getting on my hands and as you've noticed cement based product I'm still wearing gloves so it's going down nicely drying time two to three hour walk on we save vehicle traffic or heavy traffic after 48 hours so good for the environment and even though I've thickened it up some of the marks are dropping out um, but I, there we go I'm actually sweating for a change so this working from home Ideally for young people, put the bucket towards the edge, not right to the wall, let it drip. If you are kneeling in it, then you're not going to be, uh, um, it's not going to be all over your work trousers. So we're just pulling that in, nice and easy. And it is running slightly but just about uh, the right amount I want I'll put a little mark in it but it's fine so keep it going Pull that last bit out. That's the first pocket down. You see, got a reasonable coverage on there, and that's gone down about eight more thick. I would have said, judging by the foam tape on the edge. Off, and I'm going to mix the next bucket up. Uh, I didn't think you wanted to see me mix up the second bucket, but I'll mix the second bucket up. Same water content, you see. And now we're going to apply all the R3 primer. As you can see, no difference with application. Maybe I shouldn't have cut the grass before I did it. Working that in. And I was hoping uh, I was doing exactly what I wanted to do. I did want it to run a little bit down this end because I don't know whether you notice, and I'll show you in a minute behind me. I need to just come up a little bit higher uh, to meet the retaining wall. So hopefully, uh, 
it'll allow me to do that. So I'm just going to run it in. Just put it down. Like so. I'm just going to work up here so you can see me okay. So again, you can see it's flowing. Just try it out. If I've got the thicker, uh, the wetter consistency, I'd have uh, put the full five litres of water in. Then uh, I probably would have pin raked it. As you can see, I've got a pin rake ready to go. But as you say, because I've thickened it up, I decided to trial apply it. Make sure. I've got an even coat when I want it. It's going down nicely. Just going to leave that seam on there. Just flood that last bit in. Side, nice screw around, you should be fine, and as you say, just bring it up here the level I was looking for. A bit there, a bit of mess. A little bit more in this corner here. Okay, now we need to do. What you've noticed in this type of scenario, uh, I've been around first, filling any gaps and so on. Um, but that end there, we're probably looking to brought it up like 10 now. Okay. And even with the thicker consistency, it's still allowing me to run a spike roller through it. Uh, what I have got here is a spike roller with the long spikes because obviously it's gone on more than the usual three to five mil of the normal smooth and compact. It's allowing me and you can see the difference it's making any little discrepancy from the trowel it's just taking that away. And um, so I'll just spike all it off. Very easy. As you say, if I was to catch it just right I could go uh, put a broom across it, make it on slip. Um, uh, just quickly finish that off. I don't know whether I notice where the good two parts join together. Uh, just put that away. Just finally, just to finish off, Irish K301 concrete surfacer, uh, as you say, can be used uh, for your drives, concrete drives, uh, pathways, garage floors, anywhere like that. It will take vehicle traffic and it's fine externally. Um, walk on after two hours or two to three hours, vehicle traffic after 48 hours. Thank you.